In today's video, I wanna talk about a couple of overlooked elements when it comes to fishing a spinner bait. I absolutely love fishing spinner baits, but I think for a lot of anglers, when we get out there on the water, we're spinner bait fishing, we look at kind of the same things. We look at the color of the skirt that we're using. We look at what size head we're using, whether that's a half ounce, a three eighths, a quarter ounce. We look a little bit at our blades and our blade configuration, but there's a couple of minor aspects, minor elements of a spinner bait that I want to talk about because I think that they can help you get a lot more bites out there on the water. But real quick, before we get into the video, I'm sure you are wondering, why are you wearing sun gloves when you're inside a garage? That's a completely great question. And the reason is, is that right now at Fin Fishing, if you buy one of the USA made sun shirts, you get an absolutely free pair of sun gloves. So that is a $22 value completely wiped away, absolutely free. All you gotta do is add the sun shirt, add the gloves to cart and will automatically discount at checkout. I will leave a link for fin fishing down below. All right, let's talk about spinner baits and a couple of these really important elements of a spinner bait. Now to me, I, used to fish a spinner bait a lot and then when the chatter bait kind of came around i kind of put the spinner bait down for a time and now i've started to use a spinner bait a lot more and one of the biggest reasons that i love a spinner bait is for the simple fact that i think it catches the the biggest fish in the bodies of water that you fish when it seems at any time over the last several years when i have gotten on a good spinner bait bite i am catching some like really quality fish like the biggest bass that swim in the lake pond whatever it is that you are fishing will bite a spinner bait and so it has really made me just pick up spinner baits a lot more now the couple of small elements I want to talk about today, the first one is actually the wire that comes out of your spinner bait, the wire right here. Now I'm going to take these gloves off, but something that you guys um, probably don't know is that I used to build a lot of spinner baits when I was like 18, 19, 20 years old. As a matter of fact, I still have this stuff to do it, but I used to build a lot of spinner baits like from scratch, like pour the lead, do everything. And one of the biggest things that I noticed when it came to the wire of your spinner baits is there's a lot of actually different size wires. And when I mean size, I'm really talking about the diameter of that wire. And the big thing is that I used to buy kind of really thick wire because that thicker wire would not get bent up as much and that spinner bait would last a lot longer. So I thought I was saving money and I absolutely was. But something about having a little bit thicker wire spinner bait, I kind of like over the years started to realize that you don't you kind of hinder the performance of your spinner mate by using a really thick wire. So this is something that I've really started to pay attention to. And then fast forward a number of years, like in the 2018, I think it was, Wesley Schrader won a Bassmaster Elite Series event on Kentucky Lake, primarily with a spinner bait. And he talked about this exact same thing. And the thing that he talked about is some of your best spinner baits basically aren't going to last that long. And that is the truth. And because, and that's because some of your best spinner baits actually have a thinner wire coming out of the head. And the thing about that thinner wire is it gives that bait a little bit more action in the water. It, it creates a different vibration. It, it also allows the, the blades to kind of flex a little bit more, which when you're ripping this out of grass or maybe hitting it up against a log and that bait kind of comes down, it hits against your, your, even your, your hook down here, it gives those blades a little bit more action, a little bit more mo mobility. And that is what can give you, which, which can catch you a lot more fish. Now I shouldn't say a lot. I want you guys to know that this is what I call like a five to 10% tip. And what I mean by that is that if you go out and you buy, these are the exact same spinner bait. They're both the Berkeley spinner baits, which by the way, at Omnia Fishing, you can get all Berkeley baits for 25% off right now. But if you go out and you have a spinner bait, we'll say this one has a thick wire and this one has a thin wire and say you and your buddy go out fishing. If you guys, if your buddy with the thick wire caught a hundred fish on that spinner bait, 
the, you might only catch like 105 or 110 more fish because of the wire that is coming out of that spinnerbait. Does that make sense? Like I, I believe in bass fishing, there's a lot of these five to 10% tips. But the thing is, is that when you start compiling those five to 10% tips, if you go out and you do, you know, four or five things that are different than the average angler out there, then you're adding 25, 30, 40, 50% more production to your day. And that's what helps separate you from the average angler. So that's what I mean by a five to 10% tip. And I do believe that is true when it comes to catching fish on a spinnerbait. Now, the thing is, is that you might, you're gonna go through more spinnerbaits. So that is, that is something to take into note here. Some people might say, well, isn't it better to catch, you know, fewer fish on your spinnerbait, but let, let that spinnerbait lasts a lot longer. And that's just something that you have to kind of put into your mind as to what you value more. So anyways, the wire is a big thing. It's something that we should definitely look into when it comes to spinnerbaits. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about is actually something that I do feel that a lot of anglers actually do think about, and that is the blades. But I want to talk a little bit differently about your blades, because for the most part in spinnerbait fishing, there are for the most part, three different types of blades. You have a Colorado blade, which is kind of more circular like this. You have your willow leaf blade, which looks like a willow leaf. Actually, it's a willow blade. And then you have an Indiana blade. An Indiana blade is kind of more teardrop shaped. It's like a longer version of a Colorado blade. Now, growing up, I have kind of always held true to the motto is that the, the Colorado blades put off more vibration. So I tend to use Colorado blades in dirtier water where the willows kind of put off more flash. So I tend to use them more in clear water. And then the Indiana blade is just kind of somewhere in between. And I will say that a lot of times that does hold true. But what I have found over the last couple of years, I guess you can say is that there are specific situations out there on the water that kind of break the mold when it comes to the blade configurations, but they will mean the biggest difference in the number of bites and the number of fish that you catch. And what I mean by that is that, for example, there have been times where I am fishing really muddy water and I'm using a spinner bait, but it just so happens to be during a shad spawn. And I have found that a lot of times like I said, for the most part in muddy water, I'm going to use two Colorado blades, but because these fish are so fixated on shad, I have seen where using bigger willow leaves, not using Colorado blades, but using two big willow leaves will actually help you to get more bites because it just matches what the fish are kind of feeling and wanting down there in the water. It doesn't put off as much vibration 100% but it matches a little bit more specifically what the bass want. And so therefore you will get more bites. Now on the flip side of things, there's also been times where I like to wake a Colorado blade spinner bait in clear water. A lot of us don't think to use a, a Colorado blade in that clear water, but waking that bait and also making that bait go really slow, actually slow rolling it across the bottom with that Colorado blade, that can help you to get a lot more bites. So there's something, when it comes to blades, what, I, what I'm really trying to say here is really think about your blade configuration a little bit more than just kind of the standard muddy water, Colorado blades, clear water, willow blades. Because there are situations out there on the water where changing up your blade is going to provide a different vibration and that is really going to help you to catch a lot more fish. So those are kind of the two big elements when it comes to fishing a spinner bait that I just wanted to talk about. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can watch my most recent video right here and I will see you guys tomorrow.